Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you guys so much for the support recently on the channel. But I just want to get right into today's video. I got a lot I want to talk about. And as you guys see by the title, we're going to be talking about the joint practice the Minnesota Vikings had with the Denver Broncos yesterday and for the days to come up until the preseason game, obviously on Saturday, I believe at three or four o'clock, depending on where you live. I have some of my takeaways. I watched a lot of it. I was able to get a lot of the highlights, get a lot of the... I mean, kind of what the beat reporters were saying, kind of get the feel of what was really going on. But a lot of it, I just wanted to go off my eye test, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. So I have my takeaways, and pretty much the number one takeaway was offenses struggled. Both sides of the ball. Offenses looked almost a little out of it. And I'm going to be focused on the Vikings offense especially because I feel stupid, but also I don't want to go back on my take just yet. Because I just made a video saying the Vikings offensive line has a chance at all-time greatness. And it being a really solid group with the amount of talent they have on the offensive line. And when I was mentioning those guys, I was mentioning guys like Darisaw, Ezra Cleveland, Bradbury, Uda, Wyatt Davis, and Brian O'Neill, Kind of those six. I, of course, didn't really throw Rashad Hill and Dakota Dozier in there. Who, those two probably stunk up the camp more than anybody else yesterday. It was, it was just kind of embarrassing. It was just, I mean, they were just getting killed. Rashad Hill, I mean, I feel like we're going over and over again with this little Rashad Hill, Dakota Dozier experiment. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know, I think in business and in life, when you have a problem and you can address it early on and you can move off it, it's a much easier transition period with anything in life. If you can move off a problem sooner than later, it's fine. Instead, if you keep going over, over and over again, that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That's how it's starting to feel with this Rashad Hill, Dakota Dozier situation, because they got killed yesterday. And I know it wasn't all just on them. The offense did look bad. And I know Kirk Cousins, he looked bad too. But the offensive line did not look good yesterday. That's my number one takeaway is just the Vikings O-line just really wasn't it wasn't intact. There was no kind of chemistry at all throughout the whole line. Second takeaway, I kind of mentioned it in the first one, just the offense as a whole for the Vikings. The offense as a whole for the Vikings, it looked sloppy. It looked kind of not engaged. I mean, they were bringing energy, but there was really no guy that kind of stepped up and like said, we are, we are going to start dominating this practice. And the thing that I think makes me very mad about the Vikings is Yes, you don't have Darisaw. Jefferson was very limited in what he was able to do. I get it. And I get you're not fully going, so you can't really get a full grasp of what you're doing. But Vikings, listen. You have guys like Irv Smith. You have a good quarterback in Kirk Cousins. You obviously have Dalvin Cook. You still have Adam Thielen. You should be able to produce and get offensive momentum going early on in a training camp joint practice. That's... That's really where my concern is because, listen, Kirk Cousins, the, as much as I am rooting for him this year, I am also, I also, not self-aware about him, but I'm also, I can see both sides. I kind of land in the middle on the Kirk Cousins kind of, oh, he's really good, he can win, and then people would say he can't win at all. I'm kind of in the middle. But this is when Kirk, it really bothers me with him. When I want to see some fire out of him. I want to see him kind of be like, hey, let's go. We are getting this going. I want to see a blow up at practice. If I get a notification today, Kirk Cousins blows up on the offense for having a sloppy practice, I would love that. Because that's what guys like Brady does. They get intense. They're in your face. And I know it's tougher for a guy like Kirk to do that in comparison to a guy like Brady because Brady's a seven-time Super Bowl champ. If Brady tells you the go run three laps you're gonna go run three laps if kirk tells you that you're gonna be like kirk what are you talking about offense looks sloppy o-line sloppy those are my two kind of biggest takeaways all right let's get all that negative out there because damn the vikings defense did look good yesterday i know the broncos offense is not the best but that d-line really dominated and specifically one guy shout out michael pierce the calf looks good he he was faster than i think i realized 
I mean, when he, he he had one swim move, he put on the guard, or maybe it was the center for the Broncos, got right up in the, the quarterback's face, and he made a play. Obviously, you can't sack the quarterback in these drills, but it would have been a sack in a real game. Forced him outside. It was beautiful. He was also getting tip passes. He was playing very aggressive. So shout out Michael Pierce. He was bringing it yesterday. They looked aggressive. Also, the Vikings cornerback groups, I don't know what it is about them, but they look they look very good. They look like they're playing aggressive. I was so happy when I saw they got a couple flags thrown on them. I'm like, go, go get a couple PIs. Go get a couple holding calls. Play aggressive. I hated when the Vikings in years past would kind of just play 10 yards off and then kind of like let them get what they want to do. Go make some contested plays. Go make some big time plays. Defense. Honestly, I'm really excited about this defense now. The defense is looking really good. It's kind of coming together a little bit. And that's kind of what my fourth takeaway was from yesterday was the continuity on defense. You know, this defense, we're bringing in a lot of new guys. I mean, Michael Pierce wasn't there. Dalvin Tomlinson wasn't there. Uh, obviously, Eric Kendricks and Barr missed a lot of time last year. Pat Pete, he obviously wasn't here. You got kind of a bunch of new guys, but they look like they love playing football together. And I think on defense a lot in the NFL – I think continuity is a lot of it. You know, you got to have chemistry with each other. You got to be able to be like, hey, I got your back if you got mine. And then when one of your brothers makes a big play on defense, you go support him. You get engaged with him. You get this energy going where nobody's scoring on us. That's what they kind of had yesterday. And I love seeing it because, I mean, the Vikings didn't really have that last year. They were getting the, the ball ran down their throat. They couldn't guard anybody completely flipped the script with their first joint practice the continuity the chemistry they looked like they loved playing together and also one huge shout out to the d coordinator i don't know if this is andre patterson's idea he ran a 5-2 if you guys don't know what a 5-2 is five down defensive linemen and two linebackers and the five linemen i think it was i don't i don't this is not in order don't uh, quote me on this but Anthony Barr was on the D-line with Hunter Pierce Tomlinson and DJ D that is everything I've been asking for for probably the past two years is put Barr on the D-line and have him just get a straight pass rush at the quarterback because people forget Anthony Barr is 6'5 250 can run a 4'5 something like that I mean he's a freak athlete let him get after the quarterback I love seeing that causes problems and my fifth takeaway Teddy was back in Minnesota that was something it was great to see you know teddy and dalvin kind of say what's up to each other teddy and obviously coach zim say what's up to each other zimmer was like i could tell zimmer wanted to be like please come back i want to get this kurt guy out of here you are everything to me because zimmer's one and only true love we know is teddy bridgewater but it was cool to kind of see guys like that back mike boone obviously as well pretty good first practice though i mean obviously the offense struggled a little bit you can kind of expect that early on in the year i mean that's why if you look at the over-unders for all the preseason games are all at like 34 to 38 points not a lot so offenses obviously struggled defense looked really good they looked explosive and the thing about the defense was they looked good even though the offense looked bad it wasn't just the broncos offense and making mistakes the vikings defense were making contested plays when the broncos would make a good play the vikings defense would stop them anyway thank you guys so much uh come back for more joint practice news from the minnesota vikings see you guys next time school bikes